Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to talk about outlining. So the last video was about plotting. So that leads into outlining. So here we go with the outlining. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that I was what we call a pantser. Yeah, I was one of those writers that literally just went, let's just start writing. And I started writing and I had so many just frustrations and stops and I didn't finish it and it's taken me years, seven years, seven years, seven years to just finish writing it, not editing or anything like that, just getting it down on paper, seven years. How ridiculous is that? I'm not even done. I'm editing and I'm sitting there going, crap, we've got shit to add to this. So the idea that I'm a, a pantser just kind of boggles my mind because I'm kind of anal retentive and scheduling and planning everything else in my life. I have multiple planners for God's sake. So for me to be a, a fly by the seat of my pants writer, that just sounds weird now. Now that I, I found my world and my method, sounds really weird. So while I was getting ready to go into NaNoWriMo 2017, I was doing a lot of research about the writing process. I was like, I'm going to finish this freaking book. You have no idea how how insane that was. <laughs> like, I was constantly like, I have to finish this thing. This is stupid that it takes this long. This is ridiculous. I should not be taking this long to write a book. So while doing this research, I came across Vivian Reese on YouTube. Go ahead, check her out. She's awesome. I really like her. Um, but I came across one of her videos on how she outlines. This was really helpful because I was like, I'm already past that part. I'm writing the book. I'm too good for that. Yeah, that humbled me a lot because I watched her video and I started to realize, shit, I should probably outline. But what I did was I finished watching her whole video, I took notes on the whole thing, and I went back and kind of compared it to what I had up until that point in my book. And oddly enough, I had these really good plot points down. And I was like, wow, I am matching up with this correctly. And where I saw my book finishing out, I was like, it matches up to these plot points. And I was like, oh, maybe that's because it's like what every other book does. And because I read all the time, subconsciously my brain was like, this is how this is supposed to go, duh. So I'm not saying that being a pantser is a bad thing necessarily. I mean, some people can do it and do it great. I'm just, like I said, anal retentive and OCD and I have to plan everything out. And apparently my books are part of that. So these are gonna be the phases that I did throughout my book and that lined up perfectly with Vivian Reese's phases. And I'm like, yes, this is a great idea because I think everybody else does it. And I will go ahead and put a little asterisk right here, a little warning. Since I learned these phases when I read books, I'm starting to notice those phases while reading other books. So that's kind of a fun little tidbit but also be careful because you'll start noticing them too. So first things first is you have to introduce your characters, your story, your world, something. You have to introduce something. So there's an introduction phase. So there's a phase where you start to like the character or you start to get to know the character and you start to build that kind of little bond with the character. So a perfect example of this, I just read the Ruby Red series, which I love by, and I'm probably gonna say her name wrong, Kirsten Gear is the way I wanna say it, <laughs> but I just read that. So perfect example is in Ruby Red, the character doesn't start out traveling through time. The character doesn't start out with these issues and these conflicts that started, you know, that, are, that keep you in the book. It starts out with you knowing who she is, finding out who her cousin is, a little bit more about her family, a little about uh, the situation, things like that. So it's just like a slow introduction into the people and the world. So the next phase is once you've kind of introduced a little bit of the characters and a little bit of the world and everything, you make them uncomfortable. So by making them uncomfortable, I'm not talking about nearly killing them, necessarily, or literally having them hang on the verge of death or having the whole world blow up in their face. It's just making them uncomfortable, not really trying to scare or kill them that much. So this is gonna be more of just kind of taking their normal everyday life and making something different that can make them go, huh, there's something else out there. A very good example of this is in the book Divergent by Veronica Roth. This is where the main character has to make a decision. Does she stay with her family and kind of turn her back on who she is? Or does she leave and find out who she really is internally and what she feels internally and things like that. And a decision like this isn't going to be just like, oh, I 
I think I'll just have salad today. Oh, I think I'll have the soup today. It's nothing that small. It's going to literally make them uncomfortable. It's going to be them stepping out of their everyday norm. So in this book, she makes that decision, and that's kind of a, a, a hard decision to make. I mean, leaving your family and possibly never seeing them again, it's a big deal. So it's making her pretty uncomfortable. So at this point, this is where you're going to see how the character reacts to this uncomfortable situation. This was part of your plotting homework if you did it. I'm hoping you did it. So how does your character react to different situations? One of the situations being they were just put in an uncomfortable place in their world. So how are they going to react to this? A very good example of this is going to be Dead Witch Walking by Kim Harrison. My favorite author ever. <laughs> she puts her characters in an uncomfortable position where the main character loses her job. That's pretty uncomfortable. It's her career, her job, her livelihood. And as an adult, you know that. And you know how scary it is. So she lost her job. How does she react to that? Ooh, she decides to team up with a vampire, very sexy vampire, and a pixie with a very foul mouth. Love him. Love Jinx. And they team up and they create their own business and they start working for themselves. That's how the character reacted to that shit. So for the next phase, this is going to be, well, that didn't work. So however the character reacted and tried to kind of make things a little okie dokie, you kind of gotta say, nope, that's not gonna work. We're gonna do something else here. This part is going to be a step above making them uncomfortable and yet still below killing them off, okay? We're not trying to kill them just yet, people. So just a little bit more uncomfortable, something else happens, that's kind of how life is. Things happen, and then more things happen. And then things happen, and then more things happen. And it just kind of progressively gets worse until you just start crying by yourself in the closet. At this point, your reader should already be emotionally attached to your characters, so they're actually going to care what happens to them. They're going to care that, oh God, something else happened. How are they gonna get out of this? How are they gonna fix this? How is this gonna resolve? So they keep reading. The next part of this is going to be, I'm going to fix this. This is the phase where your character basically makes a plan. Says, you know what? This crap happened. Let's plan the shit out of this and let's fucking fix it. There are even going to be times where they don't fully actually plan to do something. They just react and they do it. There's a lot of situations that you're gonna put your character into where it's like, if I don't do something, I'm going to die. So this is basically them planning to, to live. A good example of this is in the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Love it. So during this book, all these things happen that lead to the fact that the Sorcerer's Stone is going to be stolen and used to raise the evil Voldemort from the grave, sort of. So the characters basically have to go, this is not happening. We're the only ones that know about it. Nobody's listening to us. We have to fix this. So they make a plan to fix it. The next point in our story is what I like to call where shit hits the fan. So everything that they did basically does hit the fan, goes everywhere, everybody's like, well, fuck. This could be a final battle scene. This could be where the villain is revealed to be, I don't know, the character's mother. Oh, nobody saw that plot twist. Things like that. This is where everything happens. This is the fun part. And at this point, a lot of the questions should be answered. If you're in a series, don't answer all the questions. But a lot of the questions should be answered. What happened? Why were the people there? How are they gonna get out of it? What's going on? My favorite book for this is The Winter Witch by Paula Braxton. Love her witch series books. But this is the part of the story where the main character who is a witch comes face to face with the evil witch. And by coming face to face, I mean like the actual form of the evil witch, which is a really disgusting, gross thing. You have to read the book, you'll see. It's awesome. So for this point, the reason I'm emphasizing this one so much is this is the part of the book that we've all had staying up till 2 a.m. to figure out what happens. <gasps> oh my God, is he gonna die? Is he gonna live? Are they gonna get together? What's going on? So we've all done it. We've all stayed up till 2 a.m. reading the book, trying to get to this point or getting to this point and trying to figure out what happens. Another little asterisk, this is the part of your book that you're really hoping for, where your readers stay up till 2 a.m. trying to get to this point or trying to read through it to figure out what happens. And the last point in your book is what I like to call 
the end. It's not just a dead stop unless you're going to do a cliffhanger and into another book. That's fine. That pisses me off a lot of the times, but you do you. This part of the book is where you basically clean everything up after that huge boom. Shit happened. There was a battle. Clean it all up. This is where you kind of answer questions like, did the villain win? Did the character win? Did somebody die? Who died? Are they coming back to life? Things like that. You know, you just kind of answer all of those little questions that everybody wants to know the answers to. Every ending, though, is completely up to the writers. So it's up to you. How do you want to end it? Do you want to tie it up in a pretty little bow and make everybody have little hearts coming out of their head? That's fine. Go for it. I'm kind of one of those people that likes, you know, the sad endings where somebody died and things happen like that. So a perfect example of this is going to be Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. Rowling. Can you see that I am a Potterhead here? So in this book, J.K. Rowling does an amazing job of not only clearing every question up, cleaning up after the fight, making all of these characters, but I mean, she also has you feel all of these emotions. There's a lot of feelies going on during the Harry Potter series. She also takes you to years and years after the battle to where Harry Potter takes his son to the train station and sends him off to Hogwarts himself. Aww. So these are the different phases that I have learned while learning how to outline and these are now like my gospel. They're my Bible. These, I stick to these. I actually have a 3 by 5 card with all of them on it <laughs> stuck to my pushpin board so I never forget them. But these phases will help you whether you're just doing a very bare bones outline to be able to start writing your story or if you are doing a full on outline with paragraph after paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. Either way, these will help you keep your story very interesting and keep your readers wanting more. That's all I have on outlining today. And don't forget there's a blog post that goes along with this video, so check it out over on ChristinaBachBooks.com. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy writing! She also takes you to years and years... Hold on. Itch in my nose. Bugging me. A very good example of this is in the first Harry Potter book. Harry Potter... <laughs> For two seconds I forgot the name of it. Subplots, everything... What the hell? <laughs> what is my Twitter doing? My favorite book for this is... I'm gonna try it again. <laughs>